from the NHRA. From California to New Jersey, Canada to Texas, the NHRA Winston Championship Drag Racing Trail makes 19 stops a year, with the world's finest racers questing for their share of the $18 million total purse. The most recent event was at Maple Grove Raceway near Reading, Pennsylvania, the Keystone Nationals, and what a race. Never before has the record book taken such a beating as it did in Top Fuel Eliminator. Set and reset four times in a single weekend with the eventual Keystone champion, Daryl Gwynn, setting the new standard at 4.95 seconds. He defeated Joe Amato in the final round with another 4.95 second run. In Funny Car, John Bors won his first national event title for the season, defeating the crowd favorite and Winston points leader Bruce Larson in the final round. Bors had a big advantage off the starting line and used that to hold off the quicker elapsed time of Larson. Finally, for three races in Pro Stock Eliminator, Bob Glidden had been trying to achieve an unheard of milestone, winning his 75th national event title. The Pennsylvania track proved to be the setting for history as Glidden defeated Bruce Allen to take his 75th NHRA event victory. It is fitting that the newest super race facility to be built in the United States is just three hours away from the site of the very first NHRA national event, held in 1955 at Great Bend, Kansas. To the weekend, this is the celebration of the 35th anniversary of that event, and a bit of comparison between it and the inaugural AC Delco Heartland Nationals is in order. The Great Bend race was run on an airport runway, as city officials and the Great Bend Chamber of Commerce worked with NHRA to stage the race. The purpose of that early day event was to allow racers from all across the country to come to a neutral site to determine which car and driver was really the best. There were 220 contestants and only a few thousand spectators on that airport runway to watch times top out at 150 miles an hour. Today, the 19-race NHRA Winston Series attracts thousands of competitors to spectacular theaters of speed, the latest of which is the all-new Heartland Park, Topeka. Some 700 acres in total size with the ultimate in high-tech race course construction, attracting over 500 entries and tens of thousands of spectators enjoying an event that combines the atmosphere of competition, car show, manufacturer's exhibits, and a festival of excitement. The inaugural AC Delco, Heartland National. Hello everybody, I'm Dave McClellan and welcome to the all-new Heartland Park, Topeka. One thing certain about this race day, the winds are definitely blowing in off the plains of Kansas. One of the questions always raised about any new racing facility is just how good is the racetrack itself going to be? That question was answered in the first day of qualifying. And for the details, here's my good friend, Steve Evans. Well, David, the huge crowd in Shirley Muldowney's pits tells you that the paint car continues to be a major story in the sport of drag racing. Two weeks ago, the last event, the Keystone Nationals in Pennsylvania, Shirley Muldowney ran her first ever four-second elapsed time. She set the national record, another first for her, even though it didn't last all that long. Then she comes to Heartland Park, Topeka. She is one half of the first pair of top field racers to ever go down this racetrack. What'd she do? 496. No other driver throughout qualifying or first round this morning has been able to match that elapsed time. Shirley Muldowney, the only driver with a four-second elapsed time here. Shirley, the big question is, can you get that consistency to win one of these things again? I think we can, but there's a headwind out here. I think that'll hurt the mile an hour and not the ET, but hopefully the sun won't make the racetrack so warm that we can't put the power down on the ground. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Steve. Is this some kind of the lady guys or what, huh? All right. They're behind you. Thank you. David? Shirley there signing autographs. She'll be coming up just a little bit later here in round number two of Top Fuel Racing as our first pair of cars come to life. 
This is the man leading the points chase, Gary Ormsby, debuting a new car here at Heartland Park, Topeka. This is his fourth ride this season. His competition, the man closest to him in the points chase, Joe Amato with the wheel of the TRW special. And David, you can see the pressure on these men's faces before they crawled into this car. This is not just another side-by-side -side race during the season. This is what potentially you could look back and say, that's where I won it or that's where I lost it. Coming into this race, Ormsby only holds a 332-point lead over Amato. And right behind Amato is Dick LaHaye, and then right behind LaHaye, the man that won the last two races in a row, Daryl Gwynn. And we should explain that you get 200 points for every round of racing you win. And there is Tim Richards. Uh, no one has to tell him how the math works in this Winston Championship Series. You don't get anything if you lose, and you don't win a bonus if you win the event. It's per round of racing throughout the season, 200 points. Lane choice at this event, as it is at all NHRA championship drag races, is determined by the quicker elapsed time either in qualifying or the previous round. In this case, Ormsby ran a 5.15 in the first round when he had a bye run. That gave him the lane choice. Ormsby had a 5.06 in qualifying, which looked very strong at that point. But Joe Amato had a 5.04 even quicker in qualifying, but he fell off in round number one to a 5.24. As the reigning top field champion, Joe Amato may be a little more accustomed to this kind of pressure. He had that tremendous battle in 87 with Dick LaHaye. Gary Ormsby, as you said, has lane choice in the far lane. So far, that has not been a factor. The brand new car of Ormsby. The Castro GTX special rolling into the beam. And Amato with a slight wheel stand, but he's out first. And at the finish line, by just a matter of a few feet, Joe Amato advances into the semifinals of 511 at 273 miles an hour. Ormsby was very close at a 515. As we go back and look again, you can see both cars dead even at the starting line. Then in the first 60 feet, Amato pulls ahead. As they headed down track, that was the margin that Amato maintained until they neared the finish line 1,320 feet away. And by just a few feet, he defeated Gary Ormsby. Steve? Well, Dave, as you might imagine, we have got one pumped up Joe Amato down here. He can't even get his helmet off. We're talking pressure, buddy. This is pressure. You know, when you beat the points leader, it's really like making double points because you put him out. Yeah, I know, Steve. We've had to run him every race for the last three races, and thank God we've been able to beat him. We're, st we're struggling with this race. You know, we came out here and we did some testing and we got behind a little bit. Tim Richards and my guys, you know, that was a very important race. Well, you're not struggling now, a 5'11 in this headwind. Well, that's pretty good, Steve. We're just happy to get the win light. And, you know, the world championship is what we're looking for. And, Dave, if I do my bookwork right, Joe Amato could take the points lead if he wins this race. Steve, your calculator is performing up to par, and Joe Amato hopes his race car will, too. It's a tough job to win one of these races. Just ask the man whose crew is preparing their race car. That's Kenny Bernstein. He will be racing Mark Oswald in round number two of Funny Car Eliminator coming up just a little bit later. Let's go back to Steve with Gary Ormsby. Not much, uh, I can say, a bitter pill for you here. Yeah, sure is, Steve. Uh, we'll probably go out of here with, for the first time this year with out the lead so really put some pressure on us you know the new car a little slow to come around well it really hasn't come around like we thought it would but uh maybe we can get it together at dallas and get back in this thing now you've moved the motor maybe you can show us you've moved the motor way way back in this new car much closer to the rear axle for more traction i guess huh well you can see that it's a couple of that's as close far back as you can get them right here it's about uh we moved it back four inches from uh, the location and as far as the other car we had that we were ran pretty well we really intended on running this car in 1990 where the where the rule changes were going to have to have this and uh, i think it was a little work we'll get it together though good luck in dallas thank you steve this new race car of gary ormsby brings up an interesting point we'll touch on that in just a few moments the 1989 NHRA AC Delco Heartland Nationals is being brought to you by AC Delco. Automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. And by Firestone. Watch us, we're on the move. And by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. More Top Fuel Racing from the Heartland Nationals in just a moment.
to blow at Heartland Park, Topeka, as Don Prudhomme through takes down their big awning on the side of the 18-wheeler. This wind can also affect racing conditions. Steve has the details. Dave, the temperature is a perfect 82 degrees. The humidity, very comfortable, about 50%. But the wind is blowing 30 miles an hour with gusts to 40, already creating havoc up in the pit area. Awnings being uh, torn right off the sides of the trucks. A lot of crews trying to get them down, including Don Perdon. Now, fortunately, the wind is straight up the racetrack, so you don't have a dangerous crosswind. Now, with a top fuel dragster, this means more load on that rear wing, which could lever the front end of the car up. If it comes up in this wind, hang on, brother or sister, you might go right over backwards. Some of the crews dialing a little of that out of the wing, lowering the attack of the wing. With a funny car, the extra downforce, hard on the fiberglass bodies, hard on the windshield, but that resistance begs a nitro motor to burn more fuel and makes up for some of the performance loss. With a pro stock car, well, they just slow down. In left, they get sideways and let the wind take over. All the drivers are going to feel more of a jolt than usual when the parachute comes out driving into this wind. We may see some problems there as well. Steve, with the wind blowing directly in their face, here comes Connie Coletta and Rudy Topke, our next pair of race cars in top fuel eliminator at the AC Del Go Heartland National. Coletta has had rather an interesting weekend thus far. He grenaded an engine, absolutely exploded it right at the starting line in qualifying. Topke has been running exceptionally well. The Dardanelle Arkansas driver qualified number eight with a 5.11 and beat Frank Cook round number one. Coletta was even quicker in qualifying, a 5.04 and beat Laurie Johns in his first round race. As we look back again during that run, Coletta again experienced some engine problems. Watch the far lane of the racetrack. This time, Coletta's problems were right at the finish line and Steve was there. Well, a first-round win over Laurie Johns may be of little consolation to Connie Coletta. You see the giant hole where the rods have come out of this engine? The second severely damaged motor hundred of the weekend. Do you have any idea what's causing it? Yeah, we put a different supercharger on it. has a different opening in the bottom. And, uh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> the different opening, David, in the bottom of the supercharger is actually smaller so that the air goes into the engine at far greater velocity. If you don't make the proper changes to your fuel system, kaboom, just like Coletta. If you do make the proper changes, like Don Perdome, you run 517 in a funny car. Both drivers approaching the starting line. At the top of the Christmas tree, you see the lights come on, and Rudy Tovsky has overstaged or deep stage. He is in the proper spot, but Coletta is out in front. And Coletta wins in a 5.28 second elapsed time. The performance falling off drastically at only 265 miles an hour. Tokey made a valiant effort. His